questions. Hello, Battle Right fans, and welcome to Champions at Dawn. I am Shadow Fury three three three, your host, bringing you commentary and replays because that's what I've wanted to do this whole time. And oops, okay, and now I can. So we're going to be starting off with a match that was thank that was thankfully was the word I'm looking for. Well, it's donated to me by Brevity. Thank you, Brevity, who is currently playing as Freya, along with Sir Lancelot, playing as Taya against a Paloma, played by the Salt Guy, and Asht playing Jade. Starting out, I mean, this is a rather interesting setup. Very aggressive setup from the blue team, while the red team is going to be playing much more passive, just as a result of... Well, you have Paloma, who is essentially playing entirely keep away game because that's how Paloma kind of does things and Jade whose main strength is of course getting away stealth and burst damage so we're gonna see red team probably losing control of the center very early on blue team already has taken strong control of the center admittedly blue team has also taken a fair amount of damage red team doing their best to try to keep blue team from actually killing them while killing blue team as best as possible blue team already we see that Sir Lancelot already getting the center orb so already very close to an ultimate Red team as well, though. And we do have Ash coming out with the ultimate. Just about to kill... Te okay, well, the Taya player is down at... Getting first blood. Very nicely done there. And Brevity about to come in with an ultimate. Missing with the ultimate, unfortunately. As does that Salt guy. So, right now, Red team is still pretty much got this. Ooh, nicely done, Brevity. Good ultimate from Brevity for that. And at this point, that Salt guy now having to play a more aggressive game, which... Bit of a change from the start of the game. Brevity gonna go in for yet another ultimate. One more hit. There we go. That's the ultimate. Once the other side is over, Thunderstrike miss. That was that's an unfortunate miss there. So unfortunately, th though, despite that, that's all guys still takes it. Brevity nicely done, taking the match. Pretty much carrying that match. So good opening round from Brevity. Well, Brevity and Sir Lancelot both. Center control. Very nice to see. We'll see if the red team takes center control at this point. So it looks like now we're having second battle right choice. First battle right choice looks like standard, I mean, standard offensive choice from the blue team. Red team, Ash going for the very standard revolver or gunslinger, reducing the revolver shot or reducing stealth cooldown. And other side, oh, Ghost Wolf focused from that salt guy now. Healing from Ghost Wolf and. Looks like he oh, looks like Brevity's going for a very defensive play this time around. At least in their battle right choices. Trying to focus on shields. I mean, they were going in very strong, so it makes sense that they would try to focus on shields as that's pretty much what they need. And Sarah Lancelot getting focused down very rapidly by Ashed. This is not going as well as I think Red Team would like, but Red Team is taking the center. They are doing exactly what I figured they would probably do. And they took the center, took the center orb. And that energy difference is actually not that pronounced. I mean, the red team needed the center orb, but the blue team just has the energy difference by way of attacking. Attacking alone has given them the energy difference they need. And red team forced away from the center. Blue team is going to be just holding on that. That salt guy getting focused down. Ash nowhere near to help protect. And, oh, that missed there. Good dodge from that salt guy to avoid getting killed, but that salt guy out of the action for now. Brevity as well, basically out of the action. One good shot from Ash could take this out. Nice hunt for the heal orbs there from Brevity. They do need that, and at this point, Brevity down. Ash going for the center orb, and with that, the ultimates are still not available. Though Sir Lancelot triggered their ultimate, didn't manage to do a whole lot with it, so Red Team should be able to take this round relatively easily. One good snipe from Ash should finish this up. 53 health left, so a couple hits with a good snipe, and there's a miss on the snipe. Not sure if Sir Lancelot's going to be able to take advantage of that. Nice done, though, and not quite. Very good healing from that Salt guy, keeping Ash in the game. I mean, that was one boomerang strike away from death had that not happened, and Sir Lancelot going for gold. Unfortunately, the ultimate hitting a wall, and that pretty much does it. Sir Lancelot will take one more hit, and that'll be game. There's a snipe coming out, and that's it. Barely hear that snipe, too. Maybe I should turn the volume up a little bit. So we're at one and one between the two teams. So at this point, blue team is probably... I'm guessing they're going to probably try to focus down Ashed at this point. We're just... We're seeing that Ashed 
being able to just run free, even with that Salt Guy getting almost killed several times, Ash was able to deal most of the damage, or quite a bit of the damage. Yeah, that Salt Guy was able to heal enough to make it worthwhile, but yeah, Ash just ripping everything apart. So, healing from Sir Lancelot, as is typical when you have no healer on a team, you usually get battle rights focused entirely on healing. And that's exactly what blue team is doing. Red team, on the other hand, we have... Oh, Ash going for... Okay, they want a lot of Blast Bolts. Didn't go for the Blast Bolts stun time increase, though, which is curious. I mean, they aren't fighting double melee setup, so I'm not entirely surprised. But yeah, going for the stealth option instead. Very focused on stealth. I mean, they are using it quite a bit, but... I don't know, I feel like... The Blast Ball cooldown thing, they're definitely worried about getting attacked more than they're worried about trying to keep the blue team stunned. And at this point, the red team doing a nice job staying together just enough. The blue team getting split up too frequently. Still focusing... Oh. Brevity's focusing on that Salt Guy, but that Salt Guy doesn't really care. Ash not getting hit by Sir Lancelot, which is giving Ash all the room they need to basically deal with everybody. And was that a, that would look like a failed ultimate guess from that salt guy. And Ash about to possibly go down. For certain, Sir Lancelot about to go down. One health left. Any stray shot's gonna do it. But the center orb has been taken, and we do have Sir Lancelot going for the Razor Boomerang Panda. Well, Razor Boomerang Ram rather. But it is. Is it enough? Looks like probably not. No, that's all I continue to heal up Ashed. And one good snipe. One good snipe would take out Sir Lancelot, and that's what we're gonna see. A stealth into snipe. Ooh, just barely missed. And did is Brevity about to take I think Brevity was just about to take that. A couple good shots, and that will do it. Yeah, now Ash is alone. One good snipe though. Ah, missed. Missed Sir Lancelot, but honestly it would not have mattered. That game was pretty much decided, or that round was decided at that point. Bit of a turnaround, though. I did not expect quite that level of turnaround. Red team was doing a very good job keeping blue team out of the center and just keeping blue team separated. And blue team just took it. So at this point, we are going to be seeing... Let's see, what are we doing here? All right, looks like we're just... Increased movement speed for brevity and increased movement speed pretty much... Across the board, well, it's more more indirectly by Sir Lancelot with the with the use of haste on the cooldown, and another snipe coming in here. Unfortunately, Ash has been missing a lot of their snipes recently. I mean, that's huge amounts of damage on the table. That's 38 damage for every single snipe. For only one, if it hits multiple targets, of course, it's more. But that's 20% of an opponent's health. That is a huge amount of damage, taking out a fifth of an opponent's health in one go like that. At this point, Ash. Ultimating out, trying to get rid of Sir Lancelot. Sir Lancelot almost down, and I think Ash is going to just stealth over to get rid of them. And another missed snipe, unfortunately. Not sure if that's lag or what. It is important to bear in mind, you have to lead your targets. Even regardless of lag, you do have to lead, especially at that distance. And I don't think Ash was doing that. So that gives Sir Lancelot a lot of room to dodge. Ash trying to finish off Sir Lancelot, while Brevity working to get rid of that salt guy and might be able to do so. Salt Guy with a nice silence there on the ultimate, but that's not going to be enough. And yet another miss by Ash. Sir Lancelot was on their ram at the time. They had been triggered, had triggered their ultimate. And that's game. Nice wind bomb coming in there for Sir Lancelot. Finishing them off. And was that, a, that was a blind shot. Well done. So blue team managing to take that round 3-1. Very well done. I mean, they... That first round was very convincing. The second round, I felt like red team kind of had blue team's number. Third round, though, that was a turnaround. I was really surprised by that. Like, seriously, that was... The degree to which that simply came out of nowhere. It was very come from behind there. So, at this point, I'm going to be doing replays that I played. So, yeah. I mean, they'll probably be good. I'll pick good ones. I just don't like casting myself. But I will. So, I actually did a bunch of games with a bunch of different heroes, just partly to prepare for tonight, and partly just because that's a good thing to do. So, the first game here is going to be one with me playing as Shifu. Yeah, 
Right. So, I am Shifu. Actually, I'll refer to myself in the third person. Shadow Fury playing Shifu, Storyteller as Taya. Storyteller's a really good Taya, by the way. Watch how Storyteller plays Taya, practically a masterclass. I'm very impressed by their Taya play. Private Bologna as Rook and Captain... Captain Ty Nuts as Ashka. So that everyone goes for Storyteller, going for... Okay, Windstrike stunning. Wants to really be aggressive. Shadow Fury going for Root. Wants to keep everyone in... Wants to avoid moving around. With the Rook, no surprise there. Rooks moving around is extremely dangerous. Private Bologna is trying to go for Berserk. Very Every single Rook I see do, does that. Goes for Berserk on... Or goes for Root on Berserk. All the time. Captain okay, Nob's going for just extra flame strike damage and ignite. And it looks like Private Bologna already getting a lot of burst damage from both sides. Shadow Fury on going trying to finish off finishing off Private Bologna, not even trying to. Successfully finishing off Private Bologna. Keeping Captain Tynots on the run. However, Captain Tynots with a massive health advantage. They can stay out of the way and doing a pretty good job doing so. They should be able to avoid getting killed. Getting rid of Storyteller. Shadow Fury just about to try to finish this off. Should be able to manage it. Only a tiny bit of health left. Ultimate coming out right in the counter. Right outside of the counter window, too. Although I'm pretty sure you can't counter that. But against the wall, Shadow Fury finishes it off with what I think was supposed to be a double kill, but I don't think Battle Right handles double kills. I'm pretty sure that was actually that's what would happen there. So on to round two. Very convincing victory first round from Blue Team. So, yeah, I know. I I won't always do things where I win. Don't worry. This isn't just me tooting my own horn here. Anyhow, going for... Okay, heavy wind strike. Wind strike being Taya's move. One of Taya's moves where she just spins around and knocks people away. Very focused on wind strike. And Shadow Fury focused on mobility restriction. Between a root and a fading snare. That's the idea there. And Captain Tynot's going more defensive, which makes sense. They did lose quite a bit. And Private Bologna also going to try to reduce movement speed, which makes a lot of sense. Shifu and Taya both rely a lot on movement. Shadow Fury with a counter there. Pretty decent counter, but Red Team now making sure they stick together. Last game, they were not sticking together as well, and that did... Oh, damn, unfortunately triggered. Gotta be careful with Rook. You don't want to trigger that counter. In general, you don't want to trigger counters, but I find particularly with Rook, triggering that counter... I mean, Rook becomes invulnerable. And that has the Berserk status, which reduces the movement speed of everyone because of the battle right. Actually, no, sorry, that's Berserk the move, not Berserk the status. But Storyteller taking that one out and finishing off with the ultimate should be able to, well, between the two of them. Finishing off the red team, so once again, taking out the red team very quickly. But red team did a better job sticking together and was more aggressive in the center. The one thing, though, that Rook, or Private Bologna, is... Kind of getting out of the way. I mean, both Private Bologna and Shadow Fury trying, kind of getting away from their ranged allies, which is a common thing to have happen, but is an easy way to get killed. More so a concern for Shadow Fury and Storyteller, though. Storyteller going for increased healing, or actually lots of increased healing, all the healing, while Shadow Fury going for additional damage during the Fleet Foot ability. Captain Tyne Knots wants to just basically escape as much as possible going much going very much for survivability and as is the rook player as is private bologna so red team definitely playing more or definitely strategizing more defensively though admittedly that's still one of those things if the battle right choice does not seem unusual to me and i <laughs> fear this one having a hard time dealing with private bologna getting hit by the ultimate probably gonna die right here gets killed and private bologna takes it down but Captain Ty Knotts was not really hit during that fight at all. Captain Ty Knotts took basically no damage, which was not surprising. I mean, Rook is a massive force. You want to focus down the Rook. You want to make sure that Rook's not there. And with that Rook there, you end up with a lot of dying. Unfortunately, without that Rook there, you also end up with a lot of dying because Ashka's rather tricky. You don't really want to leave Ashka too high in health, especially not too high in energy. So, extra energy for Shadow Fury, extra damage, or rather, well, Slayer ability for both the Ashka and Taya players, and Rook going for speed. So, Red Team now switching over a bit more to the offensive, trying to think, well, we're pressing a bit of an advantage, go for it. 
Working okay, but unfortunately for red team, blue team managing to avoid... Ooh, never mind. No, Shadow Fury going for Captain Ty and Nuts. Doesn't want to repeat the mistake of last round, allowing red team to just deal all that damage by leaving the Ashka alive. Unfortunately, Shadow Fury not setting up their counters when it would be best to do so. And Storyteller with a nice clutch tornado at the end, just making sure they don't waste that at the end of their life. And nicely done for Captain Ty and Nuts, not avoiding triggering the counter there. Able to get off that ultimate. It's always important to do that. Whenever you see someone go over counters, Captain Ty Nods was on point there. Made sure not to get that counter. That counter was a bit early, though. If it had gone a bit later, but at that point, the counter was basically just empty counter. Which, generally, you don't want to do. For obvious reasons. I mean, if you go for an empty counter, then what do you have, right? The last round... Looks like, off, well, yeah, Office of Choice for Shadow Fury, Office of Choice for Storyteller. All of the last battle rates are always just increased your ultimate, either offensively or defensively. And it looks like Private Bologna is still going offensive, but Captain Tynot's not sure if they want to go offensive or defensive. And at this point, it looks like Blue Team is going to be able to take out Sergeant, or Private Bologna. I'm promoting Bologna right away. I mean, they've been doing pretty well. They deserve a promotion. But at this point, they're still a private. That promotion hasn't been approved yet. And they did go down first. Storyteller making sure to avoid getting into any more fights. Oh, sorry, no, Shadow Fury avoiding any more fights. Storyteller doing fine. Shadow Fury taking a lot of damage, though. Probably going to go down here with his ultimate. Although, maybe not. No, looks like we are going to see Captain Ty Knots. Not much they can really do at this point. I mean, they're going to be dealing with damage they can, but Storyteller making sure to position that X-Strike just right finishes off Captain Ty and Knots. It's a really good kill there from Storyteller, and like I said, Storyteller, someone to watch. They were actually just doing placement matches at this point, but I think there's someone to watch as far as Taya players go. What the? I just... Okay, I don't know why it's doing this. But yeah, they are somebody to watch. Anyone who wants to know how to play Taya, they don't actually have anything on the Odium yet. They should. Because they're good. They know what they're doing. And another one will be coming in from... From Brevity. So... Yeah, later on I hope I'll be able to get more and more replays. If you want replays casted, just let me know. Just send them to me on Dropbox or whatever, and I'll happily cast them. I enjoy casting replays. It's a thing I like doing. Right, so we have one here with Brevity as Croak with... Let's see, double check here. We have Brevity as Croak. We have Ranger 14 as Jade. Which, by the way, if those of you are not aware, Jade is my main. So, if I seem to know what's going on with Jade far more than with anybody else, that's why. Because I play Jade mostly. I mean, Nestle on Freya and Tinoy on Rook. Rook's proven really popular, just opening the Early Access. Wasn't in beta at all, brand new hero in Early Access, and has been a massive success. Very popular. Very powerful, too, or at least difficult to know what to do with. Rook gets in your face and just... I mean, gets in your face, the counter provides invulnerability, so it's not just... Like, most counters, it's either counter and the effect does something like Varesh or whatever, or Shifu, which is counter and then goes immaterial and basically gets one good hit. Whereas with Rook, it's counter, and then for the next second or so is invulnerable, and then for the next three seconds has a massive boost to their attack power. So right now, we have Tinoi, actually both both the red team members trying to avoid getting hit. Nice counter coming in from the Freya player. Natalie doing that quite well. Tinoi not quite managing to get their Berserk to hit. Actually, nice dodge from Brevity's, Brevity overall. Nice counter from Tinoi though. And the red team does have the center. Ranger getting pinned in the corner. They do have the stealth battle right, or the immaterial on stealth battle right, though. Evasion is a super useful battle right, especially when you're dealing with a double melee composition. We'll probably see them go for the the two blast vault battle rights. One that increases stun and one that decreases cooldown, because against this composition, you pretty much need that. This point, Brevity going for some really nice ultimates. There should be able to finish off. Yeah, there we go. There's... The Rook down, Tinoi going down, and Natsuli does have the center, getting some extra health, while Brevity gets some extra energy. Should be able to actually inc 
Well, she, no, she go for the stun stealth. No, they're gonna go for the ultimate. Will miss though, and well, yeah, naturally going for an ultimate, hitting, but brevity with so much health that it almost doesn't matter. It does even out the match though. This is anyone's game now, thanks to that good ultimate from Natsuli. More Toxin coming in, but it's not going to be enough. I think Natsuli will be able to take this unless Brevity gets... If Brevity gets one good hit. Whoever gets the next good hit will take this match, and Brevity misses that. Gets it with one last Venom into just M1 Strike. Very well done there by Brevity at the end. I mean, that was close. It was like... A couple missed shots here and there that basically nailed it, though. I feel like Brevity had the advantage coming into that fight with a higher health, and really, if that ultimate had hit, that would have sealed the game earlier. So, oh, interesting. Extra stealth for Ranger. Not going for the Blast Vaults. Well, Natsuli going for Shield and Thunderclap. Somewhat aggressive. They want to They want to be in the fight. I mean, both, both red team players going very aggressive. They know only... There's basically no one that can fight them head-on. The, this composition, Jade and Kuro cannot fight a melee composition head-on. There's just no way. They have to rely on stealth, they have to rely on good hits. They can win, but it's not a head-on fight. So red team, they're going to be better equipped to take the center. They're going to be better equipped to handle basically any direct assaults. Blue team needs to make sure that they're just keeping everything to the side. And at this point, nice ultimate there from Brevity. Managing to hit both red team members. And there should be a snipe sometime soon. Really, I'm a bit surprised that Ranger the 14th is not using the EX Snipe. Snapshot. Getting that root, especially on the Rook... Well, okay, on Rook, it's a little bit... If, they if they've used their Berserk, then it'll work nicely. If they haven't used Berserk, then it's a bit tricky. Though, at this point, that's where Snapshot would have been useful. It's fine. It worked out. But Snapshot is one of those things that I find wins games. Like, it's 12 damage, but 12 damage can be the thing to win the game, and getting root on your opponent, they can ability out of it, so you gotta be careful. But if they've used their escape abilities, it's kind of a moot point. So right now, I'm kind of curious what they're gonna go for. I think Ranger will probably go for Blast Ball Cooldown, and yes, they do. Blast Ball Cooldown has been reduced, as has not... Oh, okay, Camouflage Cooldown also reduced, which makes sense. And it looks like both red teams still going for the aggressive options on battle right. Still want to make sure that they can basically survive in the long haul in main fights. At this point, though, it almost doesn't matter because blue team is basically focusing entirely on making sure they have their stealth options available. Well, stealth and other escape options. Mostly as escape options. Ah, nice counter timing from Tinoy there. That's exactly what they needed to do. Not as nice counter timing from Natsuli there, but snipe is a very predictable thing. It's one of those things where cancel casting becomes very useful. Like, that is that is a situation where you pretty much need to be good at cancel casting in order to make that work. <laughs> because, my goodness. When you have counters like that, you just need to bait them out. That's all you can really do. And, ooh. Eesh. Looks like Range of the 14th getting pinned down against the wall is could be a win for Red Team. I mean, at this point, Red Team has been getting very aggressive. Winning a lot of early victories, but then just getting hit out. Nice incapacity, by the way. That's how you use it. You incapacitate somebody, you attack somebody else. In a 1v2 fight, it is essential. And Rook at this point, Tinoi, just about to go down, but Brevity has to be super careful. As always, they cannot get into direct combat. And they have just about gone into it. Unfortunately, okay, they might be able to take out one good hit. Got rid of... Got rid of the... Got rid of Natsuli. Needs to get rid of Tenoi, though. Once Camouflage is up, that should be able to do the trick. And... No, we're going to see an ultimate cast. There it is. The ultimate cast isn't going to come out in time. Yes. Not actually just barely. Actually, Brevity had quite a bit of health there. That was a fairly safe move. Good job getting the health orbs, by the way. If it weren't for that, I don't know if Brevity would have survived. Because that would have... Because that was like 24 health out of 50. That was about half their health would have been down. I don't think they would have died... But it would have been less safe as an option. You know, I might have been able to just pull off some clutch ability to win right before the Venom popped off. Because that's the important thing to bear in mind. And that was 3 0. Wow. Bit of a landslide for brevity there. Which kind of makes sense. So, I mean, well, okay, yes, 3 0 is a landslide. That's how it works. That's pretty obvious.